Hey everyone, my name is Ian and you're watching Big Rock Media. By far the most common question that I've been seeing on social media relating to travel trailers, RVs, and fifth wheels is the following. I've picked out a certain trailer that I want to buy or maybe I've already bought and I'm wondering does my current truck or SUV or these trucks or SUVs that I'm looking at, are they going to be able to tow it? So what I've done is I've developed a very simple spreadsheet calculator to help you answer this question and today I'm going to show you how to use it. My video on towing for dummies and the included spreadsheet has now been viewed by over a quarter million people and I'm very very happy that that video is out there with that spreadsheet helping people and their families tow safely and figure out what kind of truck and what kind of trailer combination is safe. However there is one problem with it. Some people just want an easy way to figure out if they've picked out a trailer or fifth wheel what kind of specs would they need to be looking for in a truck or SUV to be able to tow it. There are so many numbers involved in this equation and it can get very very confusing even for people like me who do this kind of stuff for a living. So the point of my video and the spreadsheet that I'm going to show you today and offer for free download below here in the description is going to be to simplify this in a way that more people can easily understand. I think this is going to be a very powerful shopping tool that you can take with you uh, to the RV dealership or to the truck dealership um, and, and have with you as you make these decisions. What I see very often on the social media groups for travel trailers is an oversimplification of the issue of tow vehicles. What people will say is, oh, I want this fifth wheel that weighs X amount of weight and can I tow it with an F-250 with a gas engine? Well, the problem with that question is you need to be more specific. What happens is that, well, first of all, trailers have all different weights and configurations and all different hitch weights, so that's number one. Number two is that trucks, even if you say take an F-150, well, there's hundreds of combinations of F-150 of cab length, bed length, powertrain, transmission, um, different payload packages that you can get, different towing packages you can get. And, and the same is true for all trucks. So what happens is there's no simple way to answer that question. So for instance, I couldn't tell you that yes, a Ram 2500 with the Cummins is able to tow the fifth wheel that you're looking at. There's no way to answer that. But there is a way to figure this out that's very, very simple. And that's what we're going to go through right now. So first of all, I really would recommend that you go watch my towing video because in that video I talk about things like hitches and weight distribution and controlling sway and understanding what the different weight ratings and the things like GVWR and GAWR, what all that means and why it's important for your safety. So go watch that first if you haven't already. So many of you have your heart set on a certain model of trailer and you're wondering you know, can my current truck or SUV haul this thing or do I need to invest in something new? And if I'm investing in a new tow vehicle, what kind of specs should I be looking for? This gets very confusing with the differing payload capabilities, the different hitch weight capabilities and towing capabilities of all the different configurations of the trucks and SUVs on the market today. So to answer this once and for all and to provide you with an easy tool and help you make better buying decisions, I've created a spreadsheet calculator which you can download in the link below. But before you download the spreadsheet and try to start using it, I'm going to walk you through how this works. So don't worry, it's going to be really, really easy. The first thing I need to mention is that the spreadsheet has two different tabs or two different worksheets. One is for a conventional bumper pull travel trailer. The other is for a fifth wheel trailer. And the reason that they're different is because fifth wheel trailers have more pin weight as a percentage of the gross vehicle weight of the trailer. And they also tend to carry the weight a bit differently with how you load cargo. So that's why there's two different versions there. So whether you're shopping for a fifth wheel or a conventional bumper pull trailer, um, it's going to work for you. Okay, so let's start walking through the spreadsheet together. So at the top, I have my standard disclaimer that, you know, use this at your own risk. I'm not responsible for your family's safety and, you know, I'm not inspecting your vehicle. So you need to make sure that you're doing things in the correct way. So the fields in yellow are the fields that you need to input. And I'll, I'll show you how to get these numbers. So the first box here is where you're going to input the specs of the trailer that you're planning to buy or maybe you've already bought. So there's really only two numbers right now that we need to be concerned with. The first is the dry weight of the trailer. Now the way to find the dry weight of your trailer is to look on the inside of the entry door. And on the inside of the entry door should be like a yellow or green sticker that has a bunch of numbers on it. And it will tell you the dry weight as that trailer came from the factory. That weight is going to include things like the propane tanks and the factory options that it has, so whether it has an air conditioner, a microwave, things like that. But it's not going to include things like water and batteries, but that's going to be covered here in a second when we go to the next number. So the dry weight, which you get from the inside of your entry door, is really not something you can get over the internet. 
because different trailers come configured with different options. So really to figure that out, you have to go see the trailer in person or what you can do is you can ask the salesman to send you a picture of that before you go to the dealer. The second number is a little bit easier to get, and this is the gross vehicle weight rating. So the GVWR is something that you can pull up on the manufacturer's website. You won't have to go to the dealer to that specific trailer. So for instance, a Forest River, certain Forest River model, no matter what options it has, it's gonna have a certain GVWR, and you can find that by going to the website. Also, if you're looking at the trailer in person, you can easily find the GVWR. It's gonna be on a white sticker on the side of the trailer uh, near the front, usually on kind of the driver's side. So you're gonna get those two numbers and you're gonna plug them into the spreadsheet here after you've downloaded it to an Excel file. Okay, so let's talk about the hitch weight. So the hitch weight is not in yellow and that's for a reason. So what I've done here for a conventional trailer is I've used 12.5% of the GVWR. The thing about hitch weights is that the manufacturer in their brochure on the internet will give you an estimated hitch weight for each model of trailer. But those of us who've researched this stuff and looked at trailers, and those of you who own trailers, you know this, those weights tend to be on the very, very, very low side. So I find it better to use a percentage calculation. Most hung weights on a conventional trailer are gonna be between 10 and 15%. I've seen some a little bit higher and some a little bit lower, but for this, we'll go ahead and use that 12.5% number. Now, if you know the hitch weight more, specifically because either you've weighed it, or the dealer was able to weigh it for you, or you just have better information, maybe from an owner's group, you can go ahead and replace the formula here and plug in your own number. All right, so the second area of the spreadsheet here are your cargo specifications. So you're gonna input a few things here uh, to do with the weight of your family and the weight of the cargo you plan to carry. So the first number is the weight of your cargo. So this is gonna be all the stuff you plan to put in the back of your truck or the back of your SUV. So you've gotta think of things like camping chairs, uh, camping grills, generators, solar panels, whatever kind of stuff. And this is stuff you're putting in the truck, not in the cargo area or the cargo hold of the trailer. That's an important distinction. So you need to come up with an estimate for that. It's just a ballpark estimate and plug that in here. The next thing you need to do is you need to come up with an estimated weight of the passengers you're gonna put in the vehicle. So if it's if it's you and your spouse and two kids, you need to you can easily estimate what that weight is and plug that in here. The third thing, it's kind of a small thing, but people ding me for it on my last video, is the weight of the hitch. So these weight distribution hitches that a lot of us are using for travel trailers are a little bit heavy. So input the estimated weight of that hitch in here and it helps making this calculation more accurate. Okay, so once you've input those few things in those two boxes up above, the spreadsheet is gonna do the rest of the work for you. The towing capacity that it's gonna spit out here, what, how I have it set up is it's gonna be set to 120% of the gross vehicle weight rating of your trailer. So what I've done there is I built in a 20% safety margin. So as an example of how this works, let's say your trailer has a GVWR of 5,000 pounds. This is gonna say that you need a truck or SUV that's capable of towing 20% more than that, or 6,000 pounds. And the reason for that is simply just, it's better to have a little bit of margin. You can watch my towing video for more information about this, but it's really not a good idea to tow at the very, very maximum of your vehicle. You're really stressing things out if you do that. The second number is the tongue weight capacity. So what I've done here is I put it at 110% of the hitch weight. So remember we talked about the hitch weights being very, very on the low end. So you need to keep that in mind. And I've built in a 10% safety margin here. A lot of vehicles you'll be able to find the allowed tongue weight or hitch weight in the owner's manual of the car or truck that you have. The same is true for what we talked about with towing capacity. You can find the towing capacity in your owner's manual. But what I need to say about that is that it's not the same for every truck or SUV. So for instance, the F-150 could have a huge range of towing capacities. And in order to find the one for your truck, you need to go into the owner's manual or go, some of the manufacturers have better websites than others. Uh, and actually on GM vehicles, you can find this in the door jam, which is great, but the other manufacturers aren't doing that yet. But anyway, you need to find that exact number for your exact vehicle. Don't don't listen to someone who says, oh, the F-150 can tow 14,000 pounds. That's wrong. And if you want to understand that, I have other videos, but you need to find the exact number for your specific vehicle. So getting back to the spreadsheet, I have a formula here for the payload capacity that you're going to need. This is probably going to be your, your biggest limiting factor. And if you want to understand that, again, watch my other videos. So when trying to understand the payload capacity that you're going to need uh, to tow your trailer, there's a few things that come into play. Uh, one is the hitch weight of the trailer pushing down on the truck. That 
takes up part of your payload. The second is the weight of your cargo, the third is the weight of your passengers, and the fourth is the weight of your hitch. Now because that's all factored into the spreadsheet up above, that's what this formula is pulling from. It's adding up those things and then multiplying it by 110% or 1.1 to give you a 10% safety margin on your payload. Now I can already tell you this payload number, number one is gonna be controversial. Number two, it's going to be your most limiting factor by far in this whole equation in most cases. Because what happens is in, in the race to have the best marketing messages and, and you know brochures and videos for all these truck manufacturers and SUV manufacturers, what they do is they advertise very high tow ratings, but it's very difficult to actually tow a trailer that heavy without exceeding your payload capacity. So you're gonna run up against the payload capacity issue far before you run up against uh, a towing capacity issue. So you need to keep that in mind. And one of the reasons I developed this calculator was to easily show you that you know, by towing just a moderate sized travel trailer with a half ton truck, it's very easy to have a necessary payload capacity that's much higher than a lot of the trucks that you're gonna find on the lot. So what's gonna happen is a lot of people are finding that they're pushed away from the light duty or half ton trucks or mid-sized trucks up to larger trucks, maybe even a heavy duty truck, because your required payload, once you add all that stuff together, is quite a bit more than you would think and quite a bit more than a lot of light duty trucks have. So I'd be remiss if I didn't at least briefly talk about weight distribution hitches. So again, go watch my video on towing and watch my video on payload, but the general guide that I usually use for whether you're gonna need a weight distribution hitch is if you're using more than 50% of the rated tongue weight capacity of your truck or SUV. So let's say your owner's manual says that you can have a thousand pounds maximum tongue weight or trailer hitch weight. So if your trailer uh, tongue weight is over 500 pounds, which it probably is unless it's a really, really small camping trailer like an R-Pod or maybe a tent trailer or a pop-up. So if it's over that 50%, you'll probably need a weight distribution hitch. And the reason to have a weight distribution hitch is it uses leverage to push some weight back onto the steering axle of the tow vehicle and also back onto the trailer axle. And what that does is it reduces the sag so your vehicle doesn't sit down and sag like this because that sag ruins your steering response, it's bad for handling, it's, it messes up your headlights because your headlights are pointing in the air, and it's just not a good thing to be doing. So you need to understand weight distribution hitches and if you need one, and we'll have another video coming on the specifics of weight distribution hitches and the different types later, so subscribe if you haven't already for that. So if you're shopping for a fifth wheel trailer and not a bumper pull trailer, everything I just said is pretty much the same, except there's a couple small differences. So here's how this formula is a little bit different on the fifth wheel trailers. So a fifth wheel is usually going to have a pin weight or a hitch weight sitting down in the bed of your truck on the hitch of around 20% of the gross vehicle weight rating of the trailer. So if you have a 10,000 pound trailer, it's probably going to be around 2,000 pounds of hitch weight. Now, if you know the exact hitch weight of your fifth wheel, whether you've weighed it or looked it up, then you can override the formula and put that weight in here and it will work with the spreadsheet. The other difference with the fifth wheel is that because that trailer is kind of sitting over the bed of your truck, you're probably not loading a bunch of cargo in your truck and more than likely you're putting that cargo in the cargo areas in your fifth wheel trailer. So that helps out a little bit with the payload. So other than that, the spreadsheet really works the same way if you're shopping for a fifth wheel trailer. Okay, so like I said, I'm giving you access to the spreadsheet. So here's what happened with the last spreadsheet I put out. Uh, a lot of people requested access to the Google Drive file. Well, don't do that, please, because it clogs my email inbox with like thousands of emails. Uh, I can't really do it that way, unfortunately. I know I use Google Drive, and I know a lot of you probably do too, and Google Sheets, but I can't do it that way because you won't be able to edit it, and it would mess it up for everybody else. So you have to go to the link and select download it as an Excel file to your computer and then use it as an Excel file. And I believe if you have Google Sheets and you don't have Excel, I believe what you can do is download it as Excel and then um, upload it to your drive and then open it in Sheets yourself on your own drive and you'll be able to use it in Google without having the Excel program itself. So there's a tip for you. So if questions come up about this, please put them below here in the comments. I do read and respond to pretty much every comment on my YouTube channel. And remember that don't trust the safety of yourself and your family and your vehicle to either the RV dealer or the truck or SUV dealer because their job is to try to move units and make a commission. And I'm not saying that salesmen are bad people or liars. I'm not saying that whatsoever. 
but just realize their job is to move inventory as fast as possible and they're not going to look into these details for you. So the responsibility to figure these things out is only resting with you. So you need to use the tools at your disposal, including, including what I've given you here and in the other videos, um, to make a safe decision for yourself. Again, remember that trucks and SUVs vary dramatically, so you can't treat all Ram 2500s the same or all Chevy 2500s is the same. You can't do that. You have to look up the specific numbers for the vehicle that you're planning to buy or have already bought. And the same thing for the trailer. Well, I sincerely hope that this is another useful tool that we can put out there in the travel trailer, RV, and fifth wheel community to help people be more safe and make better decisions about what kind of truck or SUV they need to purchase or upgrade to, and what kind of trailer you can safely pull with your existing truck or SUV. So if this was useful to you, please hit the thumbs up button. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because I do have more videos coming on travel trailers, towing, hitches, and all sorts of things, trucks, truck reviews. So please subscribe. I really appreciate your support. Thank you for watching. Again, I value your feedback, so let me know down below how I'm doing and what we can do to improve this. Otherwise, drive safe, tow safe, happy camping, happy trails, and we'll see you on the next one.